Our environment was the last quality of life area examined, which only 5% of respondents rated as their number one issue area. Our Silicon Valley Latino report card revealed that Latinos were more likely than other racial or ethnic groups to live in areas that were prone to increase environmental health risks, such as respiratory problems and in some cases cancer. In our new Voices of Change report, other themes emerged as well. Respondents also shared their concerns about crime and safety in their communities. Furthermore, many residents don't know how to address environmental or safety concerns in their community. One respondent shared this with us. There is a need for more vigilance at the parks because as a parent, I don't feel comfortable taking my children there. There are always gangs there and I'm scared. For the environment, we asked survey respondents to rank the following six environmental solutions. They were improving the quality and safety of parks and walkable areas, reducing air pollution in your neighborhood, offering classes and workshops to make homes more energy efficient, providing importance of promoting importance of reducing litter and promoting ways to save water and increasing the number of parks. The top environmental solution picked by respondents was improving the quality and safety of parks and walkable areas. As for differences, we found that immigrant respondents favored reducing air pollution as their top priority. On the other hand, U.S. born respondents favored improving parks and walkable areas. Joining us now to give her perspectives on the environment section of the Voices of Change report is Michelle Beasley, Regional Director of Greenbelt Alliance. Michelle, first of all, I want to take a moment to thank and acknowledge you personally and thank Greenbelt Alliance in general for the continued support and involvement with our foundation's convening and engagement efforts. You have been closely connected with us since the beginning as an advisory board member and a contributor to the Silicon Valley Latino Report Card, and now as a partner on the Nuestro Futuro Initiative. We appreciate your commitment to the Latino community, and we hope to continue working with Greenbelt Alliance around environmental issues in our Latino community. So tell our, tell our viewers, Michelle, what is the mission of Greenbelt Alliance? Sure. So Greenbelt Alliance is the champion of the places that make the Bay Area special. We bring people together to ensure the right development happens in the right places. The challenge we face as a region is how we handle growth. We have a choice. We can invest in our cities and towns, or we can continue to sprawl out onto farmlands. So we defend our natural and agricultural lands from development, so the valleys and the streams that provide our drinking water, the farms and ranches that provide fresh local food. Um, and we also work to create um, better cities and neighborhoods, so places where people can walk and ride their bike, communities that have access to parks, fresh food, transportation choices, and affordable homes. Uh, and we do this in collaboration. We work with residents, business leaders, decision makers to come up with the innovative solutions to the region's growth challenges. So we work both regionally and locally combining policy expertise with on-the-ground action, mobilizing people to make their neighborhoods thrive even more or save their treasured landscapes. So, so mobilizing uh, the community, of course, is one of our top uh, pillar, pillars of uh, purpose, as you might say. Um, we, we know that with all the now re-energized growth, the economy of Silicon Valley, we're seeing all kinds of impaction taking place, uh, demands on housing, transportation, and, and people are now, again, talking about how that's affecting their neighborhoods and, and those types of things. Um, there are concerns about gentrification. You know, uh, I can't live in this community more because these high-tech workers come in and are willing to pay, you know, much higher rent or, or purchase my home for a much higher price. Is Greenbelt Alliance, you know, wrapping that, you're wrapping your arms around those kinds of issues? Yes. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we spend a lot of time working on is um, long-range planning. And it's hard to engage people sometimes planning for the next 20 or 30 years when they have immediate issues that they're dealing with. And this is something that we've discovered has been a challenge for us when it comes to engaging the Latino community. And first of all, we can do a much better job. And so it's been great to partner with the Hispanic Foundation, the Silicon Valley, so that we can figure out new ways of engaging this community. Uh, and what we have found is that we have to meet 
the Latino community where they're at, address their immediate needs, and then build a bridge to some of these longer term issues. It's hard to care about protecting the hills over yonder when your housing situation mm -hmm. is threatened. Mm -hmm. And so addressing issues of displacement is, it's an area that's new to us, but we take it very seriously. And so partnering with other organizations so that we can engage um, the Latino community in these planning processes because it's more important to have their voice at the table uh, instead of feeling like, well, it's not going to benefit me, so I don't want to engage, which we feel well, that's the quickest way to ensure that your goals um, will not be met. Now, um, I'm sure that Greenbelt Alliance and other environmental groups that you've been or you are affiliated with do a lot of different studies. Um, you had a chance to read in advance the Voices of Change report. Were there any things that you know popped out and said, that said, "Oh, yeah, I, that sounds familiar," or uh, that maybe that's something new? Were there any any uh, observations you'd like to share with us? Sure, it wasn't a surprise to note that for Latinos, uh, access to parks and safe streets was a top concern. I mean, their neighborhood is their immediate environment, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, there's a health correlation here. Um, Latinos are more likely to live in neighborhoods that lack access to, to safe streets and parks and healthy foods, and therefore are at greater risk of heart disease and obesity and diabetes. And uh, the onus is on the environmental community to do a much better job in engaging the Latino community because in many ways they are our natural allies on some of these issues. And I was uh, thinking about a story about it's Selma Olander Park in San Jose. It's next to a low-income Latino community. Um, but the park was a magnet for crime, and so nobody wanted to use it. Mm -hmm. But the Latino community came up with an idea, let's put a sidewalk and better connect the neighborhoods. The city implemented it, and suddenly it changed the way people use the park. And so they have the ideas, and we have to do a much better job with listening to them and implementing them. Great, great. That might have been the park that uh, our respondent was talking about, you know, in terms of uh, needing a solution. Mm -hmm. So. Um, why do you, you know, you might have been a little disappointed that such a small number of people indicated that this was their, their top rated issue. You have any observations or thoughts on why that may be the case? Well, I think in some ways it's uncharted territory, understanding uh, the Lat Latinos' connection to the environment. I recall from the report card, there's a lot of data on health and education and less so on the environment. Mm -hmm. So as the Latino population grows, I think this is an area of research we need to work on a lot more. But it seems pretty consistent that Latinos tend to place a high value and have a lot of awareness around their environment, probably because they tend to live in neighborhoods that have um, higher rates of air pollution or a lack of access. But I wouldn't be surprised that um, the Latinos' ranking probably m mirrors other groups as well. I mm -hmm. think society overall tends to strive for um, you know, education and a good job. And I think many of the Latinos who settled in the Bay Area perhaps didn't come from a wealth of opportunities. So it makes sense for them to want to seek out a good education, um, feel more housing secure and financially secure, because once that's attained, it frees up their energy to think about um, other environmental issues. And the environmental community as a whole, you know, when we talk about climate change, we've sometimes talked about polar bears, which can be very unrelatable to most people. Uh, and so we have to do a better job of talking about how environmental issues connects back to our neighborhood, connects back mm -hmm. to health, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe we'll be able to build, um, you know, part new partners. Okay. Now, um, engaging more Latinos in the future, I know, is a top priority of yours. I've, I've seen you help us with this project by bringing on a Latina to help do some survey work around environmental concerns. Do you, you know, do you have some, you know, do you have some suggestions for young Latinos who may be in a space where they can think about, uh, they don't have to think about their housing costs. I mean, we, we surveyed around some big areas. I mean, we had, we had, environment was competing against housing and jobs and, and education, as you said before. Um, any thoughts on uh, if you, one of our viewers is a young Latino who's concerned about uh, their environment, where, where do they go? Can they come to uh, Greenbelt Alliance? We'd love for them to contact Greenbelt Alliance. Uh, we tend to focus on, say, neighborhood or citywide planning um, efforts, and right. there is a lot Local of that. Local stuff. Yeah. Yes, and there's a lot going on right now. Development is hot, the economy is roaring back, and so you're seeing cities work on policies and projects and plans. And so if there is something in somebody's neighborhood where they feel like, I want to understand better how I can influence this process, we would be more than happy to work with them and give them the tools so that they can be effective advocates for change. Thank you again, Michelle, for sharing your uh, thoughts with us this, uh, in this program. We uh, thank you for your past, current, and future support. We want to thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today.